I'll call this meeting to order for October the 6th, 2020. <coughs> Result of the agenda for the October 6th, 2020 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. All in favor? It's carried. Three, result of the minutes of the September 15, 2020 regular council meeting and the September 22nd, 2020 committee of the whole meeting be approved. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 4.1, result of this regular meeting be closed and the public hearing. Variance order for 2020 be opened. Moved by Councilor Morio, second by Councilor Delorier. All in favor? Opposed? <coughs> Carry. Hello? Hello. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. We're just going into the, we're just going into the hearing now. I call okay. the hearing order to hear variance application number four, 2020. The purpose of the hearing is to hear representation for or against the following variance application. To reduce frontage for duplex from 65 feet to 50 feet, corner side yard setback from 10 feet to 5 feet. Your pardon is section 169 of the Planning Act have been adhered to. I request that any person who wants to make representation to the hearing state their name and civic address. Is this me? Yeah, uh, my name is Will, uh, Wilmar Falk. Um, I guess I just pur purchased those uh, lots there from you guys and uh, yeah, want to build 10 duplexes there. Hopefully we can get these variances passed. Okay. Is there any comments on, on um uh, the, de the details of the uh, the variances. Uh, well, basically, I think I think you covered the gist of it, as as far as I understand. Anyways, um, Mr. Poole told me that uh, according to the RT zoning, I think it was uh, 65 feet was normal. 50 feet is what I'm trying to do. Um, the buildings are going to be about 20, 2260, if that's correct. Yeah, 1130 to 1150 square feet per side. Uh, all other variances should be adhered to uh, within the actual specific properties. Of course, the side yards on the two end lots and the individual frontages are the only things that I think are really kind of out of the norm uh, on this particular proposal. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Gray has a question. Is, sure. is there a planning reason for variations? Planning reason? Um, no, I don't think so. I just basically wanted to maximize the the land, and and uh, and build as much as we can there, and try to keep everything as symmetrical as possible. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. <clears throat> There's no other further uh, uh, persons that want to make representation. I'll then adjourn the hearing. Result okay. Variance, uh, resolve the variance order for 2020 for lots 33 to 42, plan 1017. Be approved. Oh, sorry, I'm skipping ahead right here. Resolve the public hearing be adjourned and the regular meeting be reopened to the public. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Gray. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay. Okay, now we'll just read that resolution now. <clears throat> Result of variance order four, 2020 for lot 33 to 42, plan 1017 be approved. Moved by Councilor Delorier, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? Councilor Gray. I speak against the resolution. We had this discussion previously to be approved something, and I indicated that that was the last time to be like approved, approved variation unless there was a planning reason for doing it, and that we should have only exceptional circumstances. I asked a very specific question. There was no specific planning reason, and unless we're prepared to do away with our planning, with our, our uh, planning model, 
then there doesn't seem to be any basis for this. And I'm against that until we have reviewed that because we have had an inconsistent application of that, of that bylaw. So I'm going to ask for a recorded vote. Okay, recorded vote. Any other questions? Okay, I'll ask the question. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. You don't, um, Mr. Folk, if you don't want to, you you can uh, skip out now because we're just going to go to our regular meeting. But the okay. the variance has been approved. It's been approved. Yes. Oh, okay, great, excellent. So, will I be getting, um, I guess, some paperwork from your office? You will be. Excellent. Okay, thank you very much, gentlemen. Have a great night. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. Uh, I guess there's no reason really to go to the other one then, eh? Okay. So moving on. <clears throat> 6.1. Result of the letter from Tom Norman be received as information. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Gray. Discussion? Councilor Delorier? Um, I see he's asking for a response to the letter. Um, I, I don't know what, what kind of response we can give him. I mean, probably each of us has thoughts on this individually um, until the, the actual application is dealt with. I think at, at this time, I think that administration has responded and say that they have received the letter uh, from Mr. Norman, but the hearing actually is, is not, hasn't happened yet, where at that, that time, people can make representation at that hearing. Councillor Gray. I assume that we're going to advise him specifically having him having raised an objection when the hearing is. Yes, that area will receive him, but he will, yes. Uh, and then him in yeah, particular, he will, not yes. just that yeah. um, pro forma notice. Yeah. Any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 6.2. Result of building permits 7320 through 8120 with a total estimated value of $624,520 be received. Moved by Councillor Gray. No, no, I'd like to note that I'm abstaining from discussion or participation in this and want me to ask myself, one of the applications is mine. Okay, you, I don't think you have to be absent, but you can abstain though. Um, so far was I sorry. I apologize. Uh, for six hundred and twenty-four thousand five hundred and twenty be received. Moved by Councillor Morio, second by Deputy Mayor Lantoni. Discussion. All in favor? It's carried. Councillor Gray had abstained from that. Six point three resulted letter from the Minister of Municipal Relations dated September twenty fifth, two thousand and twenty, concerning the municipal operating grant second and final payment be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion. All in favor? It's carried. Seven point one. <clears throat> Just to comment, I don't know if it's appropriate to drop a note to uh, Minister Squire saying thank you for the uh, support of our community. Cost nothing. Well, we'll be able to speak to see her in the fall time. So, <clears throat> resolve the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion. Councillor Gray. Have we had any reply from the RM with respect to your letter? Uh, you already no agree. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 721. Resolved in August 2020, Swan River Handy Transit Van report be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Morio. 
Discussion? All in favor? <coughs> Opposed? It's carried. 7.3, council reports. We'll start with Councillor Delorier. Um, nothing to report, I don't believe. Never first put me in a spot, but no. If you want to come back to you. Nothing to report. Okay. Councillor White. If you, uh, last week I had the opportunity to meet with the Hospital Foundation Board. Right term. Sort of the Home Facilities Foundation. Yeah, thank you. And then the uh, Medical Service, <coughs> representing the Medical Service Committee. And we're looking at uh, options and possibilities for recruiting doctors and other medical professionals to our community. And, uh, it's interesting that the number that was bantered around was 40% of the nurses in PMH right now, I believe more specifically the Swanner Bell, are eligible for retirement. As a consequence, we should expand our recruiting energies to look beyond doctors to nurses, physios, etc. So, found it an informative meeting and, and more information to come later on next week, I'm thinking. Uh, next week, yes, but then uh, the, the board, which or the subcommittee that you're a part of, will be sitting there to further discuss some of the yeah. items that you were just mentioned. Then on the 30th, I met with the, the help slash harm team who were dealing with people who don't have the same gifts that those who are sitting in this room have, so specifically many of them uh, who were, had to move because of the Conrad fire and, and asking questions of the, the lady in charge. She said they clothes, uh, medical supplies, personal hygiene, and try to direct those individuals to areas of government assistance. So I was hurt for them, and I'm not sure what the solution is, but. Uh, we will continue up with further meetings. Then October 1st, I met with the concerned citizens of North Parkland, and uh, with all of the uh, comments and controversy relative to mental health and addictions, uh, the group remains optimistic that the, the federal government and or provincial government may look at their possibility of a, a group home, whatever the term is appropriate, where people can get the help they need may come to fruition. They've been on it now. I've been part of that team for 10 years, and they certainly persevere. I, I'm staying optimistic for them, but it's been a long road. So they care for people, and it's important that we have people try to help those people. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Gray. There were a number of meetings immediately following our last town meeting. The first was a meeting of the Swan Valley Recreation District where we uh, very had form an incident um, in which we uh, discussed winding up that corporation. The original plan, as you recall, was, and so we're going to have to come back to the council at some point, the original plan was to have the foundation look at the uh, deal with the matters. There was a specific plan that was presented which included making sure that there was an always uh, an evergreen fund for uh, seed money. Um, the foundation has indicated that they're not prepared to administer the fund in that way. Um, I think that's a significant problem. Um, and that doesn't mean that we can't utilize them. It means that I don't think we can give the capital to them. So I think we need to look at that. So when we get to our next meeting, we'll talk about that. And once we have had a resolution out of the recreation district, uh, I'll bring back that report. I have two other counselors here who will be part of that discussion. I would encourage them to consider all terms. Having said that, I think there are people on that group in, in the Recreation Commission who have, and their views about to contribute significantly less than the Swan, the, the town of Swan River, um, who would prefer it to go to the uh, foundation on its terms. I, I think that has its own challenges, and I, you know, I having come to the plan in a certain very specific methodical way, I think it's dangerous for us to shift from that. But I will have a further report on that in due course. Uh, the second meeting was a meeting of RISE. There was not a lot of substance. We barely got to form uh, Councillor. Um, we had to impose on Councillor Polisnik uh, uh, to attend. He wasn't feeling well. Uh, and we know now that that turned out to be particularly bad. Uh, we passed minutes and financial statements and so on. There was nothing 
of great substance there. Uh, there is a, a bit of a plan to do a, some form of, and I hesitate to use the word strategic plan because it really won't be um, any more than ours will be, but a, a better plan for what we're going to deliver. One of the things that arose out of that meeting was a concern that um, I suppose less from uh, our end of the Toronto's Bozeman. I wouldn't say we didn't have any concerns, but um, not as much. But Swan Valley West and, and us had uh, a number of issues about, and then about the way in which we're going to go about economic development. Many of the plans that were discussed really involve the discussion of what municipalities are going to do. And it's not really RISE's role to discuss that. It really isn't. Um, there are times when we would reasonably encroach upon that, but that is not, this isn't one of them. Um, the, uh, one of the, as an example, uh, Reed Galloway suggested we look at a regional um, incinerator for disposable garbage. Minotonis is almost at its end, Benito is almost at its end of its um, useful term. Uh, I don't know about incinerator very much, and I don't know whether or not it's a viable alternative it may or may not be. It certainly may change what we would do if we may need a bigger area. Uh, but um, obviously it would take considerable effort from a number of municipalities. And so uh, what we talked about was the um, challenge that faced all council when uh, Mountain uh, decided to not hold the October 5th meeting. Um, and, and I, I understand that um, we went through a whole series of issues about, about um, people suggesting I had called a meeting. I'm going to revisit that. No point in it. Um, we, I did not, um, as all of my colleagues would know from the letter I sent. But I do speak strongly that we can't simply delay meeting and discussing these issues. That is not a responsible course. And uh, my view was and is that. The three members of the rise, because they're people who have committed to do to involve themselves in the economic proposal, be particularly um, part of that discussion. If Mountain wants to be part of it too, I'm not suggesting we should exclude them. Um, and it's my understanding from the Nathan's correspondence that uh, Mountain wishes to host that meet that meeting now, which I think we're scheduled for November second. Is that correct? That's where it's set. Okay. Because, but I think we have to have that meeting. Whatever, I mean, whatever format we have to, I don't see any alternative. And I think it'll be big issues. I think we need to talk about, for instance, how we're going to fund tourism, whether or not we're going to talk about various sales taxes, um, whether or not there's going to be an incinerator, whether, and, and, and RISE is going to, the people in RISE are going to do some background work so that we'll have materials available for that meeting whenever it occurs. But, it's again not really a rise discussion. On the happy, so those are two unhappy reports, um, or as unhappy as they can be. On a happier note, I chaired the uh, Swan River Friendship Center uh, annual general meeting, which went almost flawlessly. Um, Ken Monroe had spent uh, a month obsessing about details, and as I said, it went almost flawlessly, um, and which is which was hard to do with a Zoom meeting, which involved. I think there were 80 some people who were registered and, and uh, really quite smoothly. Uh, they had one vacancy on their board, uh, and that board, the board will fill it on the uh, I didn't have a lot of meetings last week. I had a number of meetings with both people, so I had a meeting coming up. I think we'll set up the services, which continues to operate pretty well. Um, COVID is, of course, a particular challenge for it because it's in the nature of the business of settlement services involves personal contact. Um, and COVID is a significant uh, factor in restricting that. So, other than those normal four or five meetings, uh, I think too much. Well, sounds like there's a couple, but um, with, with RISE, um, I know that there's lots of questions that come out of the board. Like you said, that it's not really the board's mandate to deal with some of those things, and, and it's important for the municipalities to, to get together to, to give RISE some kind of direction at least because we're talking about substantial dollars if that was something that was to be done. Um, my question with Rise, I was just going to ask you, was that 
is are we or is rise looking at a different constitution yet or was that even uh, we haven't begun the drafting of it we haven't discussed we've had a discussion but um, without disrespect we, we've just not had enough bodies at the table on a regular basis to do that we had i think two meetings ago we had a full quorum and we had a general discussion about, about um, a very normal discussion about strategic plan and about what the structure should look like. Um, and so then the next plan was to have a, a more complete meeting, but we have to have most of the participants available right. in right. order to do that. Otherwise it would be, yeah. well, I could certainly do both of those just by writing them out, but I don't, that's, that dictatorship has not worked well in the past. <laughs> that would work well now. <clears throat> no, and it was just a question. I realized that, you know, it's just like any board, you, you don't meet that frequently. And so when you are meeting, you have a lot of things on, on, the, on the agenda to cover off, and, and often that is kind of shelved to the next time. So thank you. <coughs> Councilor Friesen. Uh, last week I had a meeting at the museum, and we were talking about the simple magic already, which is good. If anybody's interested in adopting a building for our Christmas uh, event, it won't be like last year because we're going to make sure everybody stays in their vehicle and just drives around and turn on the lights. Um, so if anyone out there would like to adopt a building and decorate it, they can start in time now. They just have to uh, let me know. Uh, community Sick Care is having a meeting on the 13th of October. There will be no Spooktoberfest this year because of the COVID. It would be far too dangerous to have children in and out of buildings, etc., etc. So uh, they have some other plans in mind, and uh, I think one of them is a uh, pumpkin decorating contest and maybe. Decorating your homes or your yards um, instead of things you told us. I had a professor from Winnipeg call about Manitoba H friendly. Actually, she emailed me and wants to actually talk to me, so she's going to call up for this week. So we haven't done anything age friendly for a year, so maybe she can spur me on to do something. I'm not sure what. Um, I don't know if anybody read the letter from Ray in the paper. Um, that is a concern for more than just him about the tree roots on the east pathway of the Legion Park. Uh, can we do anything about that? How do we look at it? It is, I mean, he's okay on a scooter, but a lot of people walk those pathways, and um, it could mean a trip and fall, which would be very unfortunate and uh, dangerous. So if you wouldn't mind, we'll have a look at that. That's it, thanks. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Moyo. Um, not a whole lot. Uh, my administration and myself, we've met twice now with uh, Mr. Edwards, very uh, prepping for our contract negotiations, uh, which we'll have more in the in camera session to brief you guys on. And I just want to uh, extend my appreciation to um, all the firefighters and fire departments in the valley that responded to Spruce products um, that got that fire uh, under control uh, in a very timely manner, which if it wasn't, would be very devastating to our local economies. Um, my appreciation to them and the volunteers with the water haulers and uh, workers that came out uh, to help contain that situation. But, uh, have been very um, drastic to our, our economy here if that uh, place can go there. So uh, very well done to uh, everyone who was uh, involved in that event that night. My appreciation goes up to you guys. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Deputy Mayor Wintoni, uh, first of all, I'd like to say on behalf of Council, congratulations to you and Jenna and Parker on the new arrival, safely arrival of in addition to your family. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, I have nothing to report because uh, my two meetings that I was scheduled for last week uh, were uh, interrupted with uh, uh, my personal matter of uh, 
bringing a new one into the world. So I apologize to those on the on the boards that I wasn't able to be at those meetings. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Uh, not much for me. Um, uh, Councillor White kind of alluded to the fact that the Southern Valley Health Facilities Foundation had a meeting last week. Uh, uh, went over the financials. Uh, the uh, foundation is in good standing. Uh, we talked about a little bit with the doctor recruitment and, and nursing situation. And, and as you are aware, that there's a report that's coming on what the committee is working on is how and what that um, uh, process looks like as far as recruiting doctors and dollars and cents and all that in return of service and, and contracts and so forth so that's still coming it's just it's taking longer for the group to get it done because uh, partly one was person had some uh, personal issues and, and all that but uh, we're hoping that we can kind of get that solved out through here in the next maybe two months I'm hoping so that's yet to be um, to come to us so definitely on our fire crew and, and, and all valley responders to spruce products. Nobody likes to hear of a fire out of the mill and uh, it's pretty scary. So, uh, you know, great response. I heard good things. I spoke with Mr. Perchuk uh, the next day and said that the responders that we have and throughout the whole valley are outstanding, plus some volunteers that they have with water trucks and so forth, you know, farmers and individuals uh, uh, that have uh, that type of ability to provide that resource to them. So. Um, it was uh, well done, and uh, we're very lucky to have the people that we have. Um, Ms. Hinkleman, anything from you? Um, yeah, since we see the water bills have gone out, taxes are uh, deadlines on the first, so those are in. Um, the refreshed, updated website is just about ready to go on the whole programming issues, but we'll have the app be refreshed as well as the website, so we're hoping that the new, well, the new website is easier to navigate and find some of those things like garbage schedules, that kind of thing, building permits on the front page, but it's easier for people to find those things. So hopefully that will be out in the next couple of weeks. Um, the full project is on schedule, things are going well there. Picture on the front page today. So yeah, we're looking forward to having that project completed. Um, and then Board of Provision is coming up um, November the 3rd, the deadline to is October the 19th. Um, it is not an assessment year this year, but anybody who had an assessment change wants to talk about that. But other than that, things are going on. Okay. All right. Thank you. So moving on, new business 8.1. Resolve the town of Swan River 2021 emergency plan be adopted as received. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. This is what uh, Mr. <coughs> uh, Ken uh, Patrick went through uh, a week or so ago with us. So, any discussion on that? Okay, all in favor? It's carried. Okay, 9, 9.1. Resolve the Various Order 3, 2020, for 33 Park Drive, Lot 18, Plan, plan 2370, be approved. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Morio. This is, uh, uh, was um, deferred to this meeting for looking for additional information. That information is in um, your your work there, but we also have the applicant here. Um, if there's any questions to Mr. Barkman, that I think we can allow for. So any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Okay, it's a recorded vote, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. It's carried. It's approved. Pardon? It's approved. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Resolves accounts as follows: Be hereby approved for payment. General accounts check number twenty six 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 zero to twenty six seven sixty six for a total of four hundred and fifty one thousand eight hundred thirteen and twenty seven cents. Payroll accounts checks number forty seven twenty eight to forty seven thirty four. 
for a total of $87,337.28. Payroll accounts checks number 4735 to 4739 for a total of $10,920.27. And direct deposit transfers totaling $800. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Deborah Merwin Tony. Discussion, Councillor Delorier. Check number two. 6691 these electric place stop start drives at those two lift stations. Um, Derek, are we going to, or Mr. Poole, are we going to be looking into why those failed so soon? Those both we can't be more than a couple of years old. Uh, well, Ross would be maybe five years old, but the other one is only a year or two at the most. Might even be under warranty. Six is, uh, is that 15 and Ross was 12, I believe. Okay. Well, it's already yeah. that long ago, okay. But I can double check into the warranty. I'm sure there's no warranty, but. but. Further discussion? Councillor Gray and the Councillor Moyle. Um, the, on, on checks number 26763 and 26766, which are property tax incentive program payments, do we, uh, can we at some point just get, uh, get the, uh, the um, tax incentive? program analysis for that and, and do we have other outstanding tax incentive program payments I thought we had decided not to pursue that but I could be wrong what was that tax incentives I thought we had decided to, to freeze that for the time being but I could be slot back in I don't I think there was any resolution there might have been a discussion about that in the cow meeting but I don't uh, there's no resolution passed for that and that's my mistake today is that? Should, uh, we, I, I would like to discuss that at an upcoming town meeting because I think we need to talk about whether or not that's a viable process, whether we should be doing that. Okay, that'll be added. <clears throat> so we can also get to report on the number of outstanding instead of the total amount of tax revenue that's being deferred or it could have uh, re reimbursed as square feet. What, what was that, Councillor Gray? I asked for a report, and I assume all of my colleagues want to say, which is how many other tax incentive amounts are outstanding and what the total amount of those would be. Okay. That's everything. Councillor um, Morio. Um, just curious on check number 26681 uh, for a workshop. And what workshop was that? It was on the horizon, it was on communication strategies and trying to uh, communicate with the residents. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? That's carried. 10-2. Whereas sections 3 to 6 of the Municipal Act provides that a municipality may impose supplementary taxes and subsections 306 and 306.1 provide that a municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations from Manitoba Assessment Services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alteration done by Manitoba Assessment Services on September 16, 2020 be made to the 2020 property tax rule resulting in a reduction of $1,305.28. and five, sorry, $1 Moved by Deputy Mayor Wittoni, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Councillor Gray? I'm just calling it up. Now, that, I just want to be clear what that is a reduction of the school taxes. It doesn't affect the municipal taxes at all, correct? Yes. Yeah. That first assessment has you want uh, Mr. Ganita to respond? Mr. Ganita? Uh, the property was uh, changed from taxable to school tax exempt. Right. But, but all that does is remove the school taxes. It doesn't affect us. And there's no change in valuation for it. Correct. 
Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 11.1. <clears throat> Resolve the bylaw number 16, 2020, being the bylaw of the town of Swan River to establish a councilor code of conduct be read a first time. Moved by Councilor Gray, seconded by Councilor White. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Number 12, notice of motion. Councilor Morio. Um, as you see attached to your agenda, um, this is my formal notice to provide uh, notice to uh, Council on Resolution 2020-286 uh, to uh, have that discussion or and continue the discussion at next Council meeting. Okay, so then that resolution will come forward in that discussion at our next meeting. Resolve, resolve the pursuits of sections cost um, of grain. I, I just, just as a technical matter, I, I assume that what you want is a, a reconsideration, not just a review. A review, possible reconsideration. Uh, you know, okay. I'll, I'll we'll leave that for that, that evening then. Well, there's a I'll leave it. We'll talk about it later. Resolve the pursuits of sections 152.3 of the Municipal Act. Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. We have a uh, discussion on union negotiations. Um, moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Gray. All in favor? It's carried. We're in camera. Resolve that the regular meeting of Council now adjourned at 8.24 p.m. Moved by Councilor Delorier, second kind of Councilor Friesen, all in favor? Opposed?